Summary of Chapter 6 The Two-Nation Theory Jinnah Drifts Towards Muslim Nationalism 1. Jinnah's Demand for Partition Jinnah's political career shifted to his third phase of demanding the partition of India on a religious basis to create Muslim states, generically called Pakistan. Jinnah's concept of Muslim nation rejected French territorial model and adopted German model of exclusive nationalism and cultural identity. 2. The Two-Nation Theory From Muslim side, the first explicit formulation was put forward from Punjab in an editorial dated 19 May 1888 in the weekly magazine by Muharram Ali Chishti of Lahore. Kerry Brothers of Delhi presented the idea of Islamic State based on Islamic Socialism in 1917. A year later, Sir Aga Khan presented the idea of Muslim State-like entity within the British Empire. Later, famous Muslim popularizers of two-nation theory included Allama Iqbal and Chowdhury Ramit Ali. Ramit Ali preached drastic balkanization of India, proposing Sadiqistan, Farukistan, Haderstan, Osmanistan etc. From Hindu side, Bhai Parmanand of Punjab suggested the division of India in 1904 and again in 1912. V. D. Savarkar was the most famous ideologue of the Hindu Mahasabha, which was founded in 1915 in reaction to the founding of Muslim League in 1906. Later, famous Hindu popularizers of two-nation theory included RSS leader M. S. Golwalkar. Inspired by Nazis, he advocated for a Hindu-only nation and subordination of foreign races. British proponents of two-nation theory include Theodore Beck who played a key role in the founding of Muslim League. Instead of uniting against British rule, the two-nation theory sowed seeds of resentment between Hindus and Muslims. 3. Hindu-Urdu Language Controversy of the United Provinces During Mughal rule, Persian was the official language. In 1837, the East India Company replaced Persian with Urdu at the lower echelons of UP. This favored upper-class Muslims and Kashmiri Brahmins. A broader Hindu-led Hindi language revival surfaced in the 1880s, which demanded replacement of Urdu, written in Persian script, with Hindi, written in the Devanagari script. In 1900, the UP government, taking cognition of the Muslim protest, granted equal status to both Hindi and Urdu. Four. Congress demands Purna Swaraj, or complete independence in Lahore, December 1929. Young radicals like Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhas Chandra Bose, and anti-colonial Muslims like Maulana Hazrat Mohani, and Jamiat Alema E. Hind, too, demanded independence. Although Nehru report lapsed, but its recommendations on secularism, nationalism, adult franchise and fundamental rights became a permanent Congress position. 5. Gandhi's Dandi March, March 1930 Gandhi made a comeback by launching the 241-mile-long salt march to the coastal village of Dandi in Gujarat to protest British-imposed tax on salt. His non-violent civil disobedience gained international attention. In February 1930, Jinnah and Shafi factions of Muslim League were reunited. Muslim League a closed elite party of landowners and professionals, was concerned about Gandhi's return to politics. The Gandhi-Irwin Pact, the 5th of March 1931, included ending Satyagraha and release of Dandi March Arrestees. 6. Round Table Conferences, RTCs, in London, 1930-1932. The Simon Commission's report, May 1930, did not mention dominion status for India, but did recommended RTC to hear diverse Indian interests. British policy was to blunt Congress's claims that it represented all Indians. Congress leaders were in prison due to Dandi March and were not represented at the first RTC, November 1930 to January 1931. Allama Iqbal was not invited. Jinnah decided to set up home in London after his disagreements with Muslim leaders like Sir Fazli Hussain and Sir Aga Khan. Gandhi was chosen as sole representative of Congress in the second RTC, September to December 1931. Sir Fazli Hussain prevented nationalist Muslims in Congress from attending to show that Congress is not representative of all Indians, just what the British wanted. The series of RTCs ended without any progress on Indian constitution since neither Congress nor Labour Party nor Jinnah attended the third RTC, November 1932.
Likewise, the Statute of Westminster, 1931, that codified the relationships among Commonwealth members did not mention India as Dominion candidate. 7. Allama Iqbal's 29 December 1930 address in Allahabad, now Prayagraj. Presidential address highlighted his ideas on Muslim state and communal groups. He clarified his address in October 1931 by stating, I do not put forward a demand for a Muslim state outside the British Empire. He also refuted accusations of promoting pan-Islamic ideas. Allama Iqbal's speech was initially unnoticed, but later was incorporated into two-nation theory discourse. 8. Execution of Bhagat Singh and his comrades, 23 March 1931. Revolutionary fervor was aroused by Bhagat Singh and his associates. They were on trial for bomb blast in Central Legislative Assembly and its consequences. Gandhi pleaded for mercy in a letter to Viceroy, but execution was still carried out. Public was angry at Gandhi for not negotiating clemency for revolutionaries. 9. Jinnah's self-imposed London exile, 1930-34. Jinnah bought a house in upscale Hampstead Heath, where he, his sister Fatima and his young daughter, Dina, born 15 August 1919, lived for some four years. Jinnah's young wife Radhi had died in February 1929, which had induced a deep depression in Jinnah. Jinnah focused on legal work before the Privy Council. M. C. Chagla reported that Jinnah did not do well before the Privy Council, where, instead of courtroom performance, the knowledge of law was important, and Jinnah was not a particularly good lawyer, but a skilled advocate. While in London, nomination papers were submitted on behalf of Jinnah by his supporters in February 1934 for his election to the Central Legislative Council. Jinnah returned to India in April 1934. In January 1935, he was elected to the Indian Legislative Assembly. 10. Gandhi Ambedkar Pune Award, 24 September 1932. Communal award of 4 August 1932 extended separate electorates to more ethnic and caste groups, which Congress saw as a proof of continuing British policy to fractionalize the electorate, and Gandhi especially took exception to the Dalits being categorized as a group outside the Hindu fold. Gandhi threatened fast unto death against separate electorates for Dalits. Dr. Ambedkar conceded to Gandhi's demand, resulting in Pune Pact, which increased number of reserved seats for depressed castes. 11. The 1935 Government of India Act Some of the provisions included India as a federation with provinces and princely states, expansion of voting rights, governor-general as head of central administration, and inclusion of princely states on a voluntary basis. Jinnah in Muslim League Annual Session, 1936, asserted that there are four parties in India, British, Indian princes, Hindus, and Muslims. He considered the 1935 Act unrepresentative, and criticized Congress for claiming to represent all Indians. The Act highlighted British policy of preventing Congress majority and retaining control over India. 12. The 1936-37 Provincial Election Jawaharlal Nehru advocated for Soviet-style socialism and anti-imperialism in Lucknow Presidential Address, 1936. Many prominent Congress leaders resigned over Nehru's radical socialism, but Gandhi intervened to keep Congress united against British rule. Muslim League's manifesto in 1936-37 provincial election focused on rights and interest of Muslim community, while Congress Party's manifesto advocated for democratic rights of all Indians including women and Dalits. Election results showed that Muslim voters had voted for parties other than Muslim League, especially in the northwestern zone of India where Muslims were in a clear majority.